It was a good run. I could say that about a lot of things in Yu-Gi-Oh, but Speed Duel as a concept is not one of those things. Yu-Gi-Oh news isn't really something that I've ever had a desire to cover, disregarding select card announcements that interest me, but I've got a few things to say about the recent Speed Duel announcement, some good and some not so good. For those uninformed, believe me I don't blame you, yesterday an announcement was made on the official Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Twitter regarding the upcoming Speed Duel box set, Battle City Finals, scheduled for a late November release of this year. Announcement! With the release of Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Speed Duel Battle City Finals, the initial Speed Duel saga we started a few years ago will be concluding. Frankly, it's about time. Speed Duel was a mess, and I think Konami realized that pretty quickly from its premiere, hitting shelves in late January of 2019 with two starter deck collections, Destiny Masters and Duelists of Tomorrow. The new official alternative format to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG clearly sought to capitalize on the success of Duel Links being an exact physical copy of the mobile game. And for most, especially in the beginning, Speed Duel was a nostalgia trip. It really felt like the classic Yu-Gi-Oh that a lot of us grew up with. It re-simplified the game, really bringing it to a snail crawl in comparison to the standard TCG. Reeling retired players back in and offering a less complex introductory to the game for brand new players. But how far could the game really go on just nostalgia? Eventually that feeling runs dry and it becomes just another game. How long could the game continue by just bringing in new players who would eventually transition to standard Yu-Gi-Oh? Clearly not very long. First, let's address the elephant in the room. With this announcement, several players believe that this means that Rush Duel will finally be imported to TCG Land. I firmly believe that this should serve to state that we will never get Rush Duel in the physical TCG, regardless of its popularity from simulators. Konami handled the Speed Duel format terribly, and I refuse to believe that they've taken this as a learning experience to improve on their handling of what would be Rush Duel in the TCG. I would be thrilled to be proven wrong here, but remember Papa Purple's words of wisdom. Konami has rarely learned from their mistakes. That being said, I do want to point out a few aspects of Speed Duel that I think Konami executed rather well. Speed Duel took the opportunity to import long overdue OCG exclusive cards to the TCG. I was nearly ready to call Speed Duel my favorite way to play Yu-Gi-Oh when we finally received Fiend Kraken, one of my all-time favorite vanilla monsters. But we never received Dark Chimera, so... You get nothing! You lose! And because the infancy of Speed Duel was so much of a mirror to a combination of the OCG and TCG's infancy and the dueling experience playing the early video games in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s catalog, these cards were also viable options. I'd also like to point out that the pacing on Speed Duel card premiere was done perfectly. Alternating between the starter deck collections and core booster sets was a great way to incorporate the concept of improving your deck as you go. You begin with a starter deck, then the first booster set releases, offering new tools to improve that deck, so on and so forth. My only argument against this pacing is when Speed Duel products transitioned exclusively to the thematic collection boxes. All of these boxes feel like massive data dumps whose sole purpose was to flood as many cards into the game as possible, which really screws up the pacing of how the game should have evolved. But let's keep our sights on these box sets because I feel that it created another problem outside of pacing. This is where we get into what I feel Konami failed at miserably when handling Speed Duel. The box sets were perfect for players and their friends to pick up a collection of decks that were relatively evenly matched in power that could be cycled through to duel with, offering a variety of different matchups for a really exciting duel night in your living room. The questions arise of why would I ever buy more than one? And if I can have endless duel matchups in my living room, why would I ever spend the extra money to go to any speed duel sanctioned event to have the same experience? And considering that I have to be able to attend a large scale regular Yu-Gi-Oh event in most instances to be able to participate in those side events for speed duel, why the hell would I even consider it? Konami basically softlocked themselves into a hole where Speed Duel's best tournaments happened at the kitchen table. That's all fine and dandy, but sales don't get driven by unsanctioned events held at my home address. Don't get me wrong, Kitchen Table Yu-Gi-Oh! is a pillar of the community, but for the longevity of the game, it can't stay there. It has to branch out and the baby birds need to be kicked out of the nest. This is coming from someone who does not attend sanctioned events, but even I can recognize that a game needs widespread growth to be successful. 
While I think every Speed Duel product was priced fairly in relation to regular Yu-Gi-Oh counterparts, the issue came from the necessity of buying those products to play the game. For those that still aren't privy to what I'm yapping about, in sanctioned Speed Duel events, only cards with the Speed Duel watermark could be used in your deck, regardless of there being real Yu-Gi-Oh copies of those same cards. It's a bit disheartening to know that I had the entirety of the Match of the Millennium and Twisted Nightmare starter decks in my shoebox bulk, but can't play them in an event because they're not branded with Speed Duel. And it wasn't a vice versa situation for the standard game because any and all speed duel cards could be used in regular sanctioned events. But all in the name of a profit, I suppose. Lastly, regardless of how you try to spin it or how charitable you want to be about it, the marketing for speed duel was a joke. Duel Links still has better marketing, as I'm constantly inundated with advertisements for the game online. A single insert inside the back of a structure deck that tends to get tossed quicker than it was opened is not an effective marketing strategy. Seeing that everyone is connected to social media, that could have been used as an extremely quick, cheap, and effective method of pushing new releases for Speed Duel. But, does anyone remember a single marketing post for Speed Duel outside of the initial announcements for Speed Duel products, and or a post saying, hey this is out now? Probably not. I, as I'm sure is the case for the masses, rarely remember that a new Speed Duel product was coming until it suddenly popped up on shelves. At this point, I'm surprised that we never saw a minimum space advertisement in a local newspaper promoting new Speed Duel products with the minimal effort that was given to those products. Then again, even that seems like too much effort for Konami. Let me be clear, I don't hate Speed Duels. I think it was a good thing that was treated less than favorably. It was never going to surpass the regular game of Yu-Gi-Oh, but it was never intended to. Ultimately, I want Konami to take the mistakes they made with Speed Duel and improve upon them if they ever decide to reinstate the game or or we receive Rush Duel in the TCG. Personally, I'd hope for the former, because implementing an entirely new game that has no means of crossover with the original game, I don't think Konami can handle it. It certainly won't last anywhere near as long as Speed Duel. So, I'd like to officially say my goodbyes to Speed Duel. It wasn't a good run, but it was one of the runs of all time. Godspeed. But, that's gonna wrap up today's discussion guys, let me know your thoughts. What are your feelings on Speed Duel and its newly announced conclusion? Drop a comment down below. Also, I'd appreciate your feedback on this Yu-Gi-Oh! news coverage style of video. I don't think it will be any kind of regular addition to the channel, but if there is Yu-Gi-Oh! updates that you'd like to see covered on the channel, I'd be happy to take a look. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing off.